in this week's Weather Extra, we're going to focus on April 1st, which is fast approaching and probably one of the most important dates in the year if you're concerned about snow. But before we get to that and why it's such an important date, you don't need a reminder, but certainly uh, it doesn't hurt to bring up what the last several summers have looked like. And not only the last several summers, but the late falls and sometimes the winters. Fire season has been setting records in unprecedented ways here. And considering where we are with the drought, this is no doubt top of mind for many people. We're going to come back to this in one second and how this ties in to the April 1st date. But for a moment, let's go to April 1st. Snow survey. April 1st is the most important snow survey of the year because on April 1st, the snowpack has typically on average reached its deepest in the Sierra. That's also the point at which the snow starts to melt off really fast. Here's what we look like right now. Beautiful image of us from space and you can see the snowpack in the Sierra. It looks pretty good when you consider the fact we've only got about 50% of average. But it, you don't really tell a whole lot. You're just looking at what the snow looks like on the surface. Here's a comparison to what the snowpack looked like in March of 2019. That was the last year we had a really good snowpack. Not only does the snow look far more impressive, the entire state of California looks vastly different on the color scheme. Look how much more green there was here in March of 2019 compared to where we are today, and I'm going to advance it to today. Same exact time of year, vastly different story. We know how dry this year has been. We also know how important the snowpack is to this state. And on April 1st, we're going to find out where things stand. But looking ahead, it's likely going to come in at about 50% of average for this time of year. Here's one way of looking what this snow season has looked like. If you just look at one reporting station, the Central Sierra Snow Lab, UC Berkeley runs that. It sits up near Donner Pass. They've got one of the best records for how Sierra snow has behaved uh, really over the last 100 years. And if you take a look at the arcing line on here, it shows you how the snowpack has behaved over the course of the year on average. October's over there. We go all the way ahead to June here. But what we're most interested in is April 1st, which is right there. And that line, that straight black line, that's this year. These are all of the years over history showing you the extremes from the really big ones to the really snowless ones. And that little green box right there, it's a little X, that shows you where the average is, where the mean is. We're below that. At the Central Sierra Snow Lab, we're maybe at about 60%. It's not bad. But for the Sierra as a whole, we're at half of what we should have gotten. And really, virtually all of it came in December. You see how much the line jumped up there in December? If we didn't have that storm cycle over the last two weeks of December, which was the snowiest December they'd ever recorded here, we would be sitting virtually at zero. This might have been the absolute driest because it really hasn't snowed up there in any meaningful way outside that window. So that has consequences. First thing we look at is how dry is the soil across the state? Look at the Sierra. Deep shades of red on here. Show you that over the record since we've been tracking soil moisture. The soils in the Sierra in general are at near record levels for being dry for this point in the year. That's not a good sign. Even considering we've got 50% of the snowpack, when you get down into the mid-levels of the Sierra where much of the forest is, the soil there is critically dry. But there are more important and more helpful ways to look at this. We have to keep the perspective how we did for precipitation as a whole across the state, not just the snow. January, February, and March, right now, the driest this first two and a half months has ever been since we've been keeping record for all the places in deep brown on here. But if we look at the temperatures, the temperatures are also pretty warm. Maybe not the warmest January, February, and first half of March we've ever had, but the area shaded in deep red on here show you we're at least up in the 90th percentile on that, so pretty darn warm there. And when you put those two together, watch this part of the state, because I'm going to show you what might be the most important way of looking at the landscape in terms of its vulnerability to fire. This is a map showing you the vapor pressure deficit. It's an odd term. It doesn't come up often, but it really is one of the more important ones if you want to know the condition of the landscape in terms of vulnerability to fire. Vapor pressure deficit is telling you how much the atmosphere is pulling moisture out of the landscape. And it's a combination not only of how dry the land is, but how thirsty the atmosphere is. Not a whole lot of precipitation warmer than average temperatures, you can pull more moisture out of the landscape that way. The vapor pressure deficit is quite high, even at this point in the year. As we head into the dry summer months, before we go into fire season, we're likely going to be seeing that reading come in a lot higher 
if we don't get any significant storms and we're fast approaching, you know, the end of the season when we could really hope for that. Another way to look at the landscape, you see the area over here? For the coast range north of the Bay Area, it says NC02 on there. Let's look at that region. This tells you what the energy release component is, another obscure way of measuring how dry the landscape is. This one's telling you that should a fire get started, the fuel that's there, the grass, the twigs, the trees, how dry they are and how much energy they've got as a consequence of being that dry to really get going should a fire get started. The red line shows you where the record values are for driest amounts throughout the year. That dark blue line shows you where we are right now, and we're at record levels at this point. So all of these things come together to at least give us an idea, a little preview. Yes, April 1st will roll around. Our focus is going to be on snowpack. But once we get past that, and once we get past that disappointing number, our focus is going to start shifting more and more over the next few months to the condition the landscape is in, in terms of wildfire. And at this point, it is looking like a concerning one. It doesn't have to necessarily go one way or the other. There are a lot of factors that go into a wildfire season, but the most important one is how primed is the landscape. And if you look at the last two years, the landscape is just as primed, if not a little more so than it has been over the last two years. Okay, on that note, that is this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be in next week with another one.